Oh, uh, Dr. Cinema. So, I got four hours of sleep last night. Apparently, it was so hot in my dorm room that I could not sleep past one. So, I had to deal with that at the middle of the night. So, and I couldn't go back to sleep afterwards. So, I ended up watching Batman Returns. And now, now that I've watched Batman Returns and I'm, and my memory is all now refreshed on the events that happened, I decided to do a movie face-off. Batman 1989 versus Batman Returns. Alright. So both of these movies have Michael Keaton as Batman. So there are, there will be no hero round. We're not going to be comparing the hero of these movies since it's the same hero. But other than that, it should be open game. So let's begin. Round 1. Story. The story of Batman. It's about a month since... Batman first started crime fighting, and one of his and the, one of the first big, like situations Batman's in is when he is dealing with the police and a high-ranking mobster named Jack. Jack falls into a batch of chemicals, and that turns him into the Joker. And the Joker is now causing chaos and crime all across the city. And now, Batman has to stop him. Batman returns. The, it's a year after the events of Batman. And the Penguin, a.k.a. Oswald Cobblepot, is trying to run for mayor. And when that doesn't work, he tries to take revenge on the people of Gotham based on what his parents did to him 33 years ago. And revenge on Batman as well. So, obviously, the huge advantage in this round goes to the first movie, since it's, it's what caused the event of the second movie to happen, and we will not have Batman Returns without Batman. And, but also because Batman, he had that perfect balance of light, funny stuff in the movie, as well as, like, dark, mature stuff. Batman Returns... There was a little bit more lean towards the dark and mature part, and that could turn some people off. So this round goes to Batman. Round two. Villains. So the villain of Batman is Jack Nicholson's Joker. And the villain of Batman Returns, well, I guess there are a couple, but the main one is Penguin, by, played by Danny DeVito. Danny DeVito does a great job. He really does. I really like his performance. But the other's Jack goddamn Nicholson. I mean, you know who this is going to. Round goes to Batman 1989. So let's move on to round three, which would be the supporting cast. Now for Batman, that'll be Alfred... Vicky Vale, the photographer slash love interest, that guy reporter that Vicky Vale is try is working with, a little bit police commissioner Gordon, not really. And I suppose if you really want to count all the supporting cast, there's Bob, which is the Joker's right hand man until the Joker kills him. So, yeah, that's the supporting cast of Batman. Now the supporting cast of Batman Returns is Alfred again. Um, not so much Police Commissioner Gordon this time. Not so much focus on him this time around. Um, you've got Max Shrek, the corrupt businessman that does that works with the Penguin for a little bit, and you have Catwoman. And she does a great job in this film. So does Christopher Walken, who plays Max Shrek, the corrupt businessman who works with the Penguin. I mean, it's hilarious. But seriously, the supporting cast of Batman Returns is more defined. It's a little bit more well-developed, and there's a little more focus on them. So, having said that, this round goes to Batman Returns.
Now let's move on to round four. Special effects slash action. So sorry, throat thing. So special effects and action in these movies are mainly practical effects effects and they're pretty they're pretty well done. So these films came out in 1989, 1992. So of course they had to be mostly practical effects. But it's really well done. The action is really on screen. The stuff they do with the city as well as the people and some of the props and other stuff they use. It's great. Although I have to say I'm a little bit more impressed with what's going on with Batman Returns. I mean the makeup for Jack Nicholson in Batman, it's good. Don't get me wrong. But with the Makeup for Danny DeVito in Batman Returns, damn, now that's a transformation. I mean, you can tell it's Danny DeVito, but they did a really good job putting him through a transformation. And also, I like the penguins that they use with the whole little missile things strapped to the backs. I just think that's fun to watch. So, having said that, this round goes to Batman Returns. Two to two tie. Let's go on to round five, the final round. Final round, legacy. So before 1989, superhero movies, they were definitely being made, they were being watched, but they didn't really, not a lot of people thought they were for older, more mature audiences. They thought they were for kids, which makes sense. Because you had the Superman movies. And in the 60s, you had the Adam West Batman. So, understandable. But with 1989 Tim Burton's Batman film, they not only did they prove that superhero movies can be dark and mature, but they can also be really big hits. And we have to tip our hats to him. He does a really great job with that. And Batman Returns, it's of the four Batman movies that were released during the end of the 20th century, Batman, Batman Returns, Batman Forever, Batman and Robin, the only two movies that are considered to actually be good is Batman and Batman Returns. So of course there's that part of the legacy of Batman Returns to think about. However, here's the thing. Yes, Batman Forever and Batman and Robin are bad movies which both follow Batman Returns. But here's the thing. So before Batman Returns actually came out, Warner Brothers, they were made a deal with companies such as McDonald's to make and sell toys based on characters from the movie before it was actually released. So not only was that kind of an inaccurate marketing, I suppose, but when the movie actually came out and they saw how dark and gritty I guess the Batman Returns was, it caused some concern from a lot of parents who took their kids to it, and they put pressure on those companies to do something about it, and then McDonald's and such put pressure on Warner Brothers to make, to do something about it. <clears throat> and so after the release of Batman Returns, Warner Brothers decided to replace Tim Burton with Joel Schumacher. And when Joel Schumacher was done writing the script for Batman Forever, Michael Keaton thought that was a bad script and left the franchise. So, while Batman and Robin did kill Batman movies for a little while, you make the argument that it was Batman Returns that doomed the franchise. I, I like Batman Returns, but... There is that to consider in regards to being replaced by different people afterwards. So I'm going to have to give this round and the match to the 1989 Batman film. Like I said, I really like both of these movies. They're on Netflix. Check them out. And what are your thoughts? Comment down below. Like. Subscribe. Share. Dr. Cinema. Man, I... <clears throat> I hope... Really need my throat to get better.